Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a scroll gallery mock-up with Divi's new overflow options. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new, and then I'm going to give this page a name. So I'm just going to call this create a scroll gallery mock-up. Next, I'm going to click here on use Divi Builder. And then we're going to build from scratch. Next, we're going to go into the section settings by clicking this gear icon. Click on design. And we're going to start off with the sizing. So I'm going to click here on sizing. And the first thing we need to do here is to enter our width. And our width here for the desktop is going to be 25VW. So I'm going to enter it manually. I'm also going to come over here to the max width and set it to 25VW. Now, while we add it, we might as well enter the uh, sizes for the tablet and the desk and the uh, smartphone. So I'm going to click on this little gear icon. And for the tablet, we're going to set this to 60 VW. And then for the phone, we're going to set it to 80 VW. Okay, so it's going to be the same here as well on the tablet, smartphone and desktop. So here we're going to start with the phone, we're going to set this to 80. On the tablet, we're going to set this to 60. And then the desktop is already set at 25 VW. Now let's head over to the spacing because on the spacing now we need to enter some margins both to the top and the bottom. So we're going to scroll down here to spacing and uh, enter 9VW here for the margin to the top and the margin bottom. Now notice that I've just activated my chain here. This allows me to enter the same value both for the top and the bottom. Next, I'm going to enter my padding and again here it's going to be zero and I'm going to apply it both to the top and the bottom as well. Now let's head over here to the border because here we need to add some rounded corners. And for each side, I'm going to set it to 30 pixels. Now notice that this chain is activated. If you deactivate this, it won't allow you to add all the sides at the same time. Now I'm going to go to the box shadow. And this time I'm going to go with this option here, the very first option. And here we're going to set the blur strength to 100 pixels. Okay, so you can see here the intensity has reduced. And for the shadow color, we're also going to change this slightly. Now, the um, sizes I'm using and the settings I'm using throughout this can be found in the link, which I'll provide in the show notes below. Right, so here for the shadow color, I'm just gonna paste my value in here. And again, you can see it has made my shadow very, very subtle. Now it's time to add our column structure. So I'm gonna save this. And then I'm gonna come over here to my rows and click. So next I'm gonna en enter my column structure. So I'm going to click here to add a row. And for this one here, we're going to need a single column. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now let's start by adding a background color in this row. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on background, and we're going to set the background color here to white. Now let's head over to sizing. So we're going to click here on design sizing. So the first thing we're going to do here is to set our gutter width. So I'm going to activate it first and then set my gutter width to one. Now this ensures that we don't have any spaces between uh, on the sides of our column. Next, I'm gonna come over here to our width and set this to 100%. And for the max width, same thing, we're gonna set this to 100%. And then we're gonna remove the top and bottom padding by coming over here to spacing and adding zero, both to the top and the bottom by activating my chain. Now here, we're also going to go into our box shadow to, um, to enter our shadows. So I'm gonna click here on box shadow, choose the first option here. And then for the blur strength, I'm going to set this to 80 pixels. And then as we did before, I'm also going to adjust the um, the shadow color. So I'm just going to scroll down here and click on the eyedropper tool and paste the value between the brackets. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that we've added that, um, let's head over here to the Z index. So I'm gonna click here on visibility. And for the Z index, I'm gonna set this to 99. Great, so I'm gonna go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and save. Now I've just noticed something here. It looks like um, our design here is aligned to the left. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna go back over here to my section settings, design, and then I'm gonna click here on sizing so I'm, i forgot here to center everything so all you need to do is to come to section alignment and then center it so now you can see my design is in the center right so now it's time to uh, add our content so i'm going to click this plus uh, button to add our text module i'm going to search for it select it 
And in here, we're just going to add some text which says latest work. And we're gonna assign this to heading two by clicking here where it says paragraph and selecting heading two. Now let's go in and customize this heading two text. So I'm gonna come over here to design, heading text. Make sure you've selected heading two. And now I can start by adding my font. And the font we're gonna use here is called a Brill uh, Fat Face. So I'm gonna select it. For the text alignment, I'm gonna center it. Set my color to black. And now I'm gonna enter my sizes. So first of all, for my text size, for the normal desktop, we're gonna change it from 26 pixels to 1.5 VW. And while we're here, we might as well go in and um, set our tablet size. And here we're gonna set it to 3.5. And for the phone, we're gonna set it to 5 VW. Right, so now we're gonna go to our spacing. So I'm just gonna scroll down here click on the spacing. So what we're gonna do here is to add some margins. So I'm gonna set my margin at 1.5 VW, both to the top and the bottom. So this ensures that we have some breathing space on our design here. Uh, next, I wanna enter my values for the phone. So I'm gonna click on this little icon here. And for the phone, we're gonna set this to 3.5 VW. And this is going to be both top and bottom as well. Okay, great. So this is looking um, great. Now, moving on, the next thing we're going to do is to add a second row. So first of all, I want to save this, and then I want to come over here and click this plus button to add our second row. And uh, here, we're going to set this to one column. Now, as we did before, let's go into our row settings and set our gutter width and our maximum width as well. So I'm going to click here on row settings. And then come over here to design sizing. We're going to set our gutter width. So I'm going to activate it first. And then we're going to set our gutter width to 1. For our max width, we're going to set this to 100%. And this is also going to be the same for the max width. Right, so let's move over now to the height. So here, for the height, we're going to set this to, as you can see, currently it's set to auto. We're going to set this to 38VW. And for the max height, we're also going to set this to 38VW. So while we add it, we might as well go in and enter the sizes for our tablet. So I'm going to come over here to the second tab, set this to 100VW. And for the phone, it's going to be 120VW. So we're also going to do the same here for the max height. So the phone is going to be 120, just like what we have here on the top. And then for the tablet, we're going to set this to 100VW and the desktop should be fine at 38. Now let's head over to the spacing because we need to add a top and bottom padding. So I'm gonna click here on spacing. And for our top and bottom padding, we're gonna set this to zero pixels, making sure that we don't have any space on the top and the bottom. Now I'm gonna come over here to the advanced and set my vertical overflow. So I'm gonna click here on visibility. And for our vertical overflow, I'm gonna set this to scroll. So once we have content in here and it exceeds the height, you'll see a scroll bar that appears, and this is the vertical overflow. But if you're not sure what this is, you can just come over here and click on this right, on this question mark, and this explains what it is. All right, so now that we're done with this, let's go ahead and save, and now it's time to add an image to this column. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button, search for my image module. I'm gonna select it, and then click anywhere here, and now I'm gonna look for my image and I already have my image in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. Now notice that the size I'm using here is 880 by 587. So if you wanna use your own images, you can go ahead and uh, make sure that you crop it to these dimensions. Next, I'm gonna click upload an image. Now I'm gonna come over here to design, sizing, and here I'm gonna force full width, just making sure I don't leave any gaps. And for the margin bottom here, uh, let's go to spacing first. Yeah, so for the margin bottom, I'm gonna set this to one VW. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. I'm gonna go ahead now and save. Now for the next stage now, we need to populate this here with um, as many images as you want. So the easiest and quickest way to do this is coming over here to expand settings. And here is my image. I'm just gonna duplicate this a few times. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch back over here to my desktop view. So you can see here, my images are now showing. All right, so what we need to do now is to just replace these images, make sure that they're all not the same. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon 
And then I'm going to change that image to this one here, for example. Upload an image, save that. I'll come over here and change this image as well. Go with this one here, upload an image. So as you can see, I'm just uh, adding different images here just to uh, make my gallery here a bit different. So I'm going to click here again on module settings and change my image. All right, so pretty much that's all the images I'm going to add in here. I'm going to click on save changes. All right, so now it's time to add another row. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and the column structure is just pretty much going to be a single column. Now, as we did before, let's go in and add our background color. So I'm just going to close this for now. Click here on my row settings. Click on background. Set this to white. Next, we're going to go into the sizing settings. So I'm going to click here on sizing. Activate my gutter width. Set my gutter width to 1. And over here on the width, we're going to set this to 100%. And max width is going to be 100% as well. Next, I'm going to go to my spacing to add my top and bottom padding. So I'm going to click here on spacing. Right, so my top and bottom padding is going to be 2.1 VW. We're going to go to the box shadow, choose the first option. My blur strength, I'm going to set this to 80 pixels. And then for my shadow, as we did before, I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool and paste my values between the brackets just like that. Click advanced. Visibility, and I'm also going to set my Z index at 99 and then save. Okay, so our settings are now complete. The next stage now is to add a button onto the column that we've just um, created. So I'm going to click on this plus button, set, uh, click on button. So here my button text is going to be view all. Click on design alignment. I'm going to center it. Now I'm going to customize my button settings. Now in order for us to do that, we need to come over here to button and activate custom styles for button. So let's start here with the button text size. So we're going to set this to 1VW. And for the button text color, we're going to set this to white. Now let's set our button background color. And this needs to be black. And now you can see my button is now visible. Now we also need to change the font for this button here to match our design. So I'm going to scroll down here. So our font is going to be a real fat face. And for the button border width, it's going to be one pixel. Okay, so let's add some spacing and padding to our button. So I'm going to scroll down here, select spacing. So I'm going to start here with my padding. So here it's going to be 0 0.5 to the top and bottom. And left and right padding is going to be 3VW. So I'm going to enter it here, activate my chain. So now you can see my button is slightly bigger. So pretty much this is all we need to do. So I'm going to save this and then we're going to do a quick preview. Now before we do a preview here, if you want to go ahead and style the scroll bar, you can do so by adding some CSS. But in our case here, I'm just going to leave this as it is. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this. I'm going to exit the Visual Builder. Okay, so this is our design. So as I scroll this, you can see here we have a scroll bar and I'm actually going through my design here. In fact, let me just minimize my size so we can see most of this design. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. And if you have any questions, you can always leave your questions in the comments box below and I'll do my best to respond to them. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.